Hey everyone, this is Chef, and in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Power Berserker for the first time in a World vs. World group. That includes basic profession mechanics, build options, synergies, rotations, and skill combos, and your role in an organized squad. Each of these sections is timestamped, so if you'd like to skip around the video to the parts that you want to see, go right ahead. Power Berserker is one of the best options for playing a damage profession in World vs. World at the time of this video, combining great defensive utilities with potent spike damage potential. However, playing Berserker effectively relies on performing a specific set of steps in a very specific order to maximize this potential. Berserker's unique profession mechanic is, appropriately enough, Berserk, an ability that can be used once at maximum adrenaline. Well, in Berserk, your F1 skills are improved, becoming primal burst skills, and the duration of your Berserk is extended through successfully using these skills, or through your profession-specific rage skills. To start, I'm going to show an example of me playing Berserker, annotating each step in the rotation, and then we'll discuss each of these steps throughout the rest of the video. Let's go moving forward. Nice kite. They go for the turn, they go for the jump, watch the jump. Moving forward, left side, moving forward, dodge. left side, dodge, left side, dodge, dodge, dodge. Pushing a tail with walls in three, two, one, walls and tail, walls and tail, walls and tail, walls and tail, walls. Walls and tail. spike the fucking tail, spike the tail, spike my tag, let's go. Spike my tag, we're holding right here, cover these downs, cover the downs, cover the downs, cover those downs, cover those fucking downs, just range forward, we're pushing one, three, two, one, pushing on right side, not pushing on right side, now reach down if you got, reach down if you got it, spike on my tag, spike my tag, spike my tag, we're holding it here, holding it here, hold them downs, hold them downs, cover the downs, cover the downs, cover the downs, pushing right side, on circle, let's go, pushing right side, on circle, spike on circle, spike on circle, spike on circle, we're going into it, cover the single downs, cover the single downs, pushing right side, three, two, one, pushing next circle, dodge two, dodge two. Dodge two, dodge the back Ten on Kill the fucking downs, kill the fucking downs, kill the fucking downs, follow them. Beginning with our gear, we'll be using Longbow and Greatsword as our weapons. Your Longbow 3 skill is your best damage source on the weapon outside of Berserk, and Longbow 5 is a long immobilization. But almost every Longbow skill is a projectile, so you want to be very careful using these skills to avoid projectile destructs, or worse, reflects. The sole exception is your Primal Burst skill, Scorched Earth, which is only usable while you're in Berserk. This skill leaves a large, burning trail in front of you, and as with Hollowsmith's Prime Light Beam, the target cap is per square, and has a much larger target cap than what is stated on the tooltip. On your Greatsword, 3 and 5 are both movement skills, with 3 being a ground-targeted movement skill, and 5 being a player-targeted movement skill. Your Greatsword 2 is a decent damage attack, but it does have a long channel and roots you for the duration, so it's best used when you're grinding in place cleaving on downs. Well in Berserk, your F1 Primal Burst skill for Greatsword is Arc Divider, which deals extremely high spike damage to 5 nearby targets. On our Longbow, we'll use a Sigil of Fire, and on our Greatsword, we'll use a Sigil of Hydromancy. Berserkers generate 1 point of adrenaline per successful player struck with an attack, which includes both of these Sigil procs, and Hydromancy on Greatsword is an additional way to remove Aegis when preparing to use Arc Divider after weapon swapping. On each of these weapons, we use a Sigil of Energy as well for additional dodges. To achieve critical hit cap on Berserker, we need to be at 75% crit unbuffed, without the passive bonus from Signet of Fury. This means using superior runes of infiltration on our gear to make up the extra precision that we need to achieve this. For stats on our gear, we use Full Marauder with a Berserker Amulet and a Berserker pair of boots to get to exactly 75%. But if you're lazy and you want to run full Marauder, that's perfectly fine as well. Finally, we'll use Relic of the Warrior to weapon swap more frequently. But with most Relic choices, talk to your guild or commander to make sure there's not something else that you should be using instead. For our utility skills, we take Blood Reckoning, Balance Stance, Sundering Leap, Signet of Fury, and Battle Standard. Blood Reckoning technically is a heal, but it's primarily an important component of your spike damage rotation refreshing the cooldown on your Primal Burst skills when used, and extending the duration of Berserk. Balance Stance is a purely defensive utility, negating critical hits and granting stability, which allows you to safely dive into melee to land Arc Dividers. Sundering Leap is a ground-targeted movement skill that deals damage, grants adrenaline, and also extends the duration of Berserk. Signet of Fury improves your precision as a passive benefit, but increases both precision and ferocity when active, as well as filling your adrenaline. And Battle Standard is a ground-targeted field that finishes downed enemies while rallying downed allies, and is able to swing a fight entirely by itself, as one of the most powerful utility skills in the meta currently. For our traits, we take Strength 1-2-1, one, one, 
Discipline 223, and Berserker 111. Our strength minor traits cause our dodge rolls to damage foes and slightly improve our critical hit chance, and our power well affected by might. Our major trait Brave Stride grants extra stability when using any of our movement skills, which are Greatsword 3, Greatsword 5, and Sundering Leap on a 10 second cooldown. Forceful Greatsword improves our Greatsword skills and gives us an additional source of power and might when dealing critical hits, and Berserker's Power improves our strike damage when using our Primal Burst skills. The stability from Brave Stride can help you move around during a fight a little bit more easily, but if you have good supports in your party, you can also use Peak Performance for an extra 3% damage overall. In Discipline, we improve a number of different skills and profession mechanics for Berserker. Versatile Rage and Fast Hands synergize well with Relic of the Warrior, letting us use weapon swaps as a way of generating adrenaline while in combat, while Versatile Power improves our burst skills and grants might on weapon swap as well. In our major traits, Warrior's Sprint improves our damage while affected by swiftness, and also causes our three movement skills to clear immobilization. Destruction of the Empowered deals increased strike damage per boon, and while this should rarely be the case if you're using your burst skills at the same time as your group spike, the other trait choices in this column aren't that much better. And finally, with Burst Mastery, we gain an increase to the damage of our burst skills, as well as making them refund a portion of Adrenaline, making it easier to chain together our primal bursts to maximize damage output. All of our Berserker traits improve the function of our Berserk and Primal Burst abilities. Burst of Aggression gives us personal quickness and super speed when entering Berserk, letting us move and cast skills more quickly, while Fatal Frenzy increases our power while in Berserk as well. Our major trait Smash Brawler extends the duration of our Berserk every time we successfully strike an enemy with a Primal Burst skill, and further increases our critical hit chance by 5%. Our major trait Blood Reaction converts our Precision to Ferocity, further improving our critical hit damage, and our final major trait Bloody Roar further improves our strike damage while in Berserk by a flat 10%. Berserker's damage output outside of Berserk itself is lackluster, and the key to playing Berserker effectively is maximizing your damage output while Berserk is active. Your rotation involves a number of steps that need to be completed in a specific order, otherwise your damage output drops dramatically, and you'll always do more damage on Berserker if you slow down, take your time, and use your skills correctly in the correct order. Unlike most other professions in World vs. World, your first step in a fight on Berserker is to get into combat as early as possible. You build adrenaline by striking enemies with attacks, one point per enemy struck, and you can also stay in combat by moving into and out of ranges. As a result, you'll always start fights in your longbow, as the ranged skills make it easier to poke enemies to get into initial combat and start building adrenaline. Second, you'll want to max your adrenaline bar. If you've had enough time to attack enemies, or gates, or siege, you can do this naturally. Otherwise, you can max your adrenaline by using Signative Fury when in combat. Dropping out of combat quickly drains your adrenaline, so you'll usually want to wait until right before your spike to do this if necessary. Third, you'll want to enter Berserk. And fourth, you'll want to use your Primal Burst skill Scorched Earth as an opener. If you do these steps out of order, or you try to do them too quickly, you can accidentally use your normal F1 skill, Combustive Shot, which will drain all of your adrenaline and make it very difficult to get back into Berserk with Signet of Fury on cooldown. Once you're in Berserk, your goal is to use as many Primal Burst skills as possible to maximize your damage output. The duration of your Berserk is extended every time you use one of your Primal Burst skills successfully, as well as any time you use Blood Reckoning or Sundering Leap, your two Rage skills. Adrenaline generation will usually be your biggest limiter in casting Primal Bursts, so weapon swap regularly, taking advantage of the synergy between Relic of the Warrior, Fast Hands, and Versatile Rage to continue building Adrenaline while in combat. You can also refill your Adrenaline with Sundering Leap and Signet of Fury if you didn't need to use the latter to max your Adrenaline to enter Berserk at the start of a fight. It's usually best to save these two abilities for when you're in Longbow, as reflected or destroyed projectiles don't generate Adrenaline. That said, you may not always want to maximize the duration of your Berserk. The 11 second cooldown starts when Berserk ends, no matter how long you spent in Berserk. If an enemy group kites your initial spike out, it can be a challenge to effectively apply damage from either of your Primal Burst abilities, and as a result, you may want to intentionally not use any Primal Burst or Rage skills to end your Berserk faster and prepare it sooner for your next spike opportunity. Once your Berserk expires, your damage is relatively low, and your biggest priority between uses of Berserk should be to refill your Adrenaline, 
get all of your utility skills off cooldown, and prepare for another burst rotation. One of Berserker's biggest decision points is which primal burst skill to double cast with Blood Reckoning, and when the double cast is most effectively used. Scorched Earth is a large AoE that excels in choke points and straight line pushes, with its advantage that it applies moderate damage spread across an entire group, thanks to its per section target cap. Maximizing your damage from Scorched Earth involves careful positioning of the field, and you can either target players at the front of a squad, or drop your target completely, and aim the skill using right mouse. Arc Divider, on the other hand, only hits 5 people in melee, but generates enough spike damage that it can down players by itself. This is the stronger of your two primal burst skills, and is best used on players who aren't quite on the main stack of an enemy group so that they have worse healing and boon support from their supports. The best use of Blood Reckoning is to double cast Arc Divider well in melee to pick off these people who aren't quite on tag, but if your group is having difficulty pushing or fighting in a narrow choke point, double casting Scorched Earth is also a fine alternative. As with many other elements of Berserker, waiting on your skill usage until the right moment arrives will give you better damage overall than immediately swapping into Greatsword and trying to use Blood Reckoning to double cast Arc Divider at the very start of a fight. Berserkers greatly benefit from sources of fury when used in groups, as they're only able to generate for themselves by using the arm straight line. Support scrappers using kinetic accelerators, druids using spotter, or other support professions using relic of the pack are ways that you can generate fury for a berserker to help them maintain their critical hit cap. Berserker also has a substantial hit pool and great defensive utilities relative to other DPS professions, and is better able to sustain damage in melee as a result with battle standards supplementing the res utilities of other supports. This can take some pressure off of other supports in your party, enabling more hybrid builds like Chronomancer with Chaos and Domination, or Shattered Ages Firebrains. Berserker is a relatively self-sufficient damage profession that can excel in any number of different squad compositions, making it ideal for learning the basics of world versus world damage professions. The class flavors players who enjoy a specific fixed order to their rotations, and rewards players who like to wait for the right moment to deploy their spike damage. So I hope this video has been a useful resource for you as you learn this profession. If there's anything in this video that wasn't clear or that you disagreed with, why not leave a comment to let me know? And if you want to see more videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I also stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday if you'd like to watch me play some of these builds in real time and ask questions there. But until then, I've been Chef, and enjoy the rest of your day.